this set of videos is going to be over exponents. So in all of these videos combined, I'm going to be starting with the introduction of exponents, so reviewing what does that mean and how do we simplify the basic ones. And then I'm going to be going through a whole slew of exponent properties, defining how each of them work, um, proving that that's the way that they work in the first place, and then showing how we execute those on homework examples. And then last but not least, doing um, more difficult homework examples, combining all of our properties in one. So this video itself is going to be just over the introduction and basics over exponents. Now we've covered most of this before, so this introduction should be mostly a review for you. The first thing that I need to do is define what exponents are again. It looks like here with a smaller number to the upper right. The way this reads is A is our base. So we have the base A to the exponent or to the power of N. And either one of those words is perfectly acceptable to use there, exponent or power. So what does A to the N actually mean? At first glance, the easiest mistake to make here is just to multiply A times N. And I want to emphasize again that it's an easy mistake to make, so make sure you focus on not doing that when working these homework problems. The correct way to work these is you multiply the base times itself in amount of times. Now, for this set of videos, we're only going to be working on integer exponents. So this is a perfect time to remind yourself what the word integer means, or if you need help, it's the one that goes with that double bar Z. Integers are all positive and all negative whole numbers. So in this set of videos, we're only going to be dealing with exponents that are whole numbers, both positive and negative. Now eventually, we'll also be dealing with exponents that have fractions involved in them, but that is a whole different set of definitions. So right now, we're only focusing on both positive and negative whole numbers, aka integers. Now let's see some basic examples of these. And you've actually seen these exact examples before in a previous video. So I'm not going to work through these, but I will show you how each of these is worked out. But at this time, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can recite how to work these out the correct way. So I have each of these worked out here. In example one, just two to the third, two times itself three times, works out to be eight. In example two, we have a fraction to the exponent. We know that we can take each of those pieces to the exponent, so that gives me three times itself four times. Multiply that out. I picked two and multiplied each two by themselves, which gives you this here. And multiplying everything else straight across gives us 81 over 16. In example 3 and 4, I'm emphasizing how parentheses come into play when we're dealing with negatives to the exponent. In example 4, we have negative inside the parentheses, and that tells us that we need to include the negative when we're multiplying the base times itself. Here, a negative times negative cancels out, and so our answer was a positive 9. In example 3, the negative did not have parentheses around it. So that is only taking the base 3 to the exponent. And then the negative, it copies down from step to step. So the correct answer to example 3 is negative 9. Now again, these were just the basics, kind of talking about different versions of how exponents might look. Now, let me show you some more basic examples that we'll be learning how to do when we walk through all of these eight different properties that we need to talk about. So I have example one, five to the negative second power, and example two, eight to the zero power. Um, just for the heck of it, I suggest that you pause the video to see if you actually know how to work these out the correct way. Now, I'm not going to show you the correct answers here because I'll explain the correct way to do these when we work through the property videos. At this time, however, I do want to show you what the common mistakes are, so I point these out now so hopefully you don't do them when the time comes. 
In example one, the common mistake that I see is people moving this negative from the exponent and writing it out front as something like negative 5 to the second power. So I just want to tell you now that you cannot transpose a negative from your exponent to in front of the number. Those actually mean completely different things. So, if you came up with the answer of this as negative 25, that is the incorrect answer, and that is not the correct way to do that. Again, I will show you the correct answer to this when I'm working through the properties. In example two, the common mistakes I see to this one is people thinking that the answer to this problem is either zero or eight. And actually, neither one of those are the correct answer to this problem. Again, I will show you the correct answer in the next set of videos. So at this time, I've just touched on the basics. And now it's time to start seeing how complicated these exponents can actually get. So in the next video, I'm going to be working on all of those properties that I keep referencing.